I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Merry Christmas. I know a lot of you are expecting me to have some sort of big explosion of joy and cheer like I do all the other years, but a lot of people have been saying that was kind of scary and not really keeping in the Christmas spirit. So, to keep me more relaxed, I have a chill pill patch, so it'll keep me completely under control. So, this year, things are going to be a bit more traditional. We have a fireplace, decorations, we even have snow. I have no idea how that's possible. Why, hello, Malcolm and Tamara! Got some cookies and eggnog for us this holiday season? Yes! To relax us in this time if this isn't right. Huh? This is Christmas, you should be able to celebrate it however you want to. <laughs> Sorry, Tamara, but I don't want to scare the sweet people at home with my disturbing obsession. I want to be relaxed, soothing, marketable. That's what people like. Yeah, you weren't here the previous years. Trust me, this is for the best. <sighs> this isn't right! You agree? And seeing how we are having a much more calm and subdued Christmas, we're gonna celebrate with a traditional, calm, subdued Christmas special. Here's a little ditty I like to call, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Mostly because it's called Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. It only fits that a Christmas song you wish you never knew about would be given a Christmas special you wish you never knew about. Since its release in 2000, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer has gotten a lot of talk as being one of the most memorably dumb holiday specials ever produced. And while it's not, say, Christmas tree bad, it is fascinating in some of the choices it makes. What are those choices, you may ask? Well, get ready for a cup of holiday awkwardness. This is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. The film opens with a narration by the singer of the song, Elmo Shropshire, sounding an awful lot like the opening of the fabulous Secret Powers video. It's the Christmas season, a time for telling colorful holiday stories. Hi there, I'm Adam, Prince of Eternia. Of course he sings the song while we watch our future roadkill walk to her enchanted hit and run. And honestly, I know I'm gonna sound really weird and perverted for saying it, but Grandma's kind of hot. Don't give me that! Okay, I swear I'm not into like 80 year old women, but look at the way they drew her! Just take away two lines, change the hair, maybe lose the glasses. She's kind of a bombshell! I don't know what old women the director's been looking at, but are they single? You're thinking the same thing! But as for my grandpa, we believe. Grandma got run over by a reindeer, all right. And as incredible as that was, it almost put an end to Christmas. I love how he describes his grandma being pummeled as incredible and then follows it up with the actual bad news that it almost ended Christmas. I think this guy's way too accepting of violence to the elderly. It was December and everyone in Cityville was caught up in the chaos of the holidays. Yeah, that's right. The town is called Cityville. Isn't that the place where the Powerpuff Girls fight crime? I know, it's a joke. And if you think that's bad, take a listen to what the last name of our main characters are. And that's me, Jake Spankenheimer. Spankenheimer? That sounds like a German porno that takes place at an S&M dungeon. Guten Tag, I am Spankenheimer, und dies is my lava, fuck big nugent. So it looks like Grandma owns a shop that even Cracker Barrel would call excessive, where she reads to the kids while the rest of her family takes care of the customers. But her grandson, named Jake, is struggling with the idea that maybe Santa Claus doesn't exist. <gasps> Adding to your Christmas wish list? Ah, uh, I remember when I had a random poster of a mule on my wall. It was right next to the globe that no kid has ever owned, yet for some reason keeps popping up in kids' room cliches. Tell her, Mom! Santa Claus is real! Well, there is no easy answer. Uh, historically, there was a Saint Nick who, with a loving heart, filled children's shoes with gifts of all sorts. So Santa today represents the true meaning of Christmas, giving to others. See, that's funny because, um, I'm pretty sure you want to get across that Santa exists in this world? Seeing how it's called Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? And you literally just dashed this kid's dreams by bringing up the St. Nick stuff. We're four fucking minutes in and already you have no idea what your mythology is. Kinda shatters the illusion, doesn't it? I don't think other stories would hold up as well if they were as inconsistent with their world. 
And so three rings were given to the elves, who were cookie makers led by Will Ferrell. Seven to the dwarves, who were miners best known for their harmonizing. And the rest were given to... I don't know, there's no easy answer. But there's a wizard who works at Hogwarts and a little person who lives with the Lannisters. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to eat lunch. Mmm, that's good not caring. Dad, is Santa Claus real? Uh, uh, what your mother said. Hey, who wants to put up a tree? All right, a Christmas tree! Yeah, that'll distract from his possibly shattered reality. You're looking at the new inflatable Christmas tree manufactured by the Cityville Own All Corporation. Uh, is the top of that tree looking a little phallic to anyone else? Ooh, that just hurts. We had to chop our trees down by hand. Never forget the time I had to use a beaver for a chainsaw. Last time you told it, it was a woodpecker. So let me get this straight. A penis-shaped tree is reminding you of the time where you confused a beaver for a pecker. The song would be a lot more interesting if you included this stuff in it. The next day, a shadowy man approaches, even though lighting-wise there's no reason he should be like that, who's the CEO of Own All Corp, presumably a division of Google and Disney. Grandma says you own everything. Well, not yet, but that's why I want to speak to your grandma. I want to buy her. Right now, Grandma Elfenheimer is reading to the kids. I heard about that. Say, you wouldn't happen to have an extra elf costume I could wear. I always pointlessly dress like strange characters when conducting business deals. You should see what I wore when I tried to get the rights to Fifty Shades of Grey. And did. You'd be selling to the biggest and the best. Do you know why my company controls every mall and sidewalk Santa? Because as the past voice of a Ninja Turtle, I know firsthand that you can market anything. Your store sits on the perfect place to build the crown jewel of my empire. Gifts delivered on Christmas Eve by our new Slaymobile. I could also make her obvious commentary stronger by putting Kirk Cameron on top of it. Jake, do you think I should sell the store? Are you kidding? I love this place. Whoa! What happened to his eyes there? I love this place. Jesus Christ, that's fucking scary! That looks like the mask a movie serial killer would wear! <laughs> but another family member named Cousin Mel, played by Michelle Lee, thinks Grandma is crazy for not selling. Grandma, if this store were mine, I'd sell it. Cousin Mel, this store will never be yours. Oh, yeah! Uh, I don't know if that was really, oh, yeah, worthy. I think it was more of an, I acknowledge you just said something, worthy. The way I see it, you can divide the world into two groups. People who like fruitcake, and all the rest of us. Wait, fruitcake? What does liking fruitcake have to do with any- Holidays were upon us. Really? This is warranting of a song? Grandma's killer fruitcake! Your- so obviously not interested in what your characters are going through that you gave a song to a fucking fruitcake? This is like that Whose Line Is It Anyway game where you have to make up a song out of a random word you just said. So then my grandmother made fruitcake and- Oh really? Oh the fruitcake, fruitcake, how do you sing about fruitcake? Happy yeah, has a servant, preacher, lucky, wants enough to get the whole state of Kentucky, a great big belly. So, what'd you do today, Frank? Well, I animated the state of Kentucky belching. Living the dream. So Grandma gets ready to take her treats to the community services building, presumably trying to get on the cover of Mother Teresa Weekly, as the song quite obnoxiously sings what they're already verbally telling us. She'd been drinking too much eggnog. You've been drinking too much eggnog. And we begged her not to Please, go. Please, don't go! We're begging! <laughs> But she forgot her medication. Besides, I left my medication at the store. And she staggered out the door into the snow. Critic didn't like this part. I don't like this part. Or do we also dictate farts? What, are we gonna dictate farts? What the hell are you doing? I'm singing what you are saying. Why? It's like putting the Adam West theme in the Dark Knight. There's no reason for it. Well, they're good enough on their own. All we got's a grand milf to bone. Will you stop trying to make old ladies hot? We have issues. Okay, forget it! 
What was I hoping to accomplish talking to you? As expected, Santa comes a knocking on Granny's temple and conks her literally out cold. You can say there's no such thing as Santa, but as for me and Grandpa, we believe. And that's the special, kids. Her funeral was three days later. No, no, if only it was that simple. No, the special keeps going as Jake tries to tell everybody what he saw. Santa Claus was flying low like this, and Grandma was walking like this, and then Rudolph was here, and... Now, honey, you must have had a bad dream. In case you haven't noticed, Frank, your son suffers from a dreaded affliction. What affliction? The Santa Claus is real syndrome. He's got all the symptoms. Writing list to Santa... Okay, guys, while you're having this friendly little chat, there is an old lady face down in the snow freezing to death. I don't think the boy should be as comfortably calm as he is. But strangely enough, when they open the door, Grandma appears to be gone. That's right, officer. Missing. Hit by Santa's sleigh. Yes, we've been drinking eggnog. Alvin, stop impersonating a Cityville cop. Sorry, son. Impossible. Right here in the manual. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. It's two. We got a cold 1225 Santa Claus's Real Syndrome family dispute. Wow, the Saturday morning version of Fargo is a lot more different than I thought it would be. Though this special could be saved with Grandma and the Wood Chipper. What appears to be an impression of a person in the snow. Look there, but uh, how do we know it's Grandma? My God, a ransom note from Santa. It says if you want to see Grandma alive, you'll hand over all the cookies. I'd like to know where Grandma is. Good point. We can work the Santa angle later. Better get looking for the old broad. Wait a minute. Did she just say looking for the old broad? Better get looking for the old broad. What the hell kind of family special is this? Somehow I get the feeling the original song didn't have such choice lyrics. The old broad got run over by a reindeer. The lousy bitch was blind as a one-eyed whore. Cut! 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 What? Cut. What? what? So after literally months go by, yeah, this is sort of a Christmas and a half special. They declare Grandma officially dead and walk around the house in funeral clothes. Clearly with the sister going through something. As the business starts to fade without her presence. So Cousin Mel tries to sell the store, but C.E. Leo tells her that she can't without Grandpa Geppetto's signature. So she takes him out and tries to force him to sign. It's right here in these papers. All you have to do is sign. Sing? No, sign. Sure. So sign. I'd rather sing. Grandma spending. Wow. Fucking wow. I thought the fruitcake transition was bad, but that is by far the worst segue to a song ever conceived. I mean, amazing. You put no thought or effort into that transition whatsoever. You just jumped without a parachute and didn't care at all what the consequences would be. All right then, just sign. Did you say it's been one week since you looked at me, cocked your head to the side, said I'm angry, five days since you laughed at me, saying get that together, come back and see me? No, I said sign. Oh, because you know I got a music video crew ready to go, lights, camera, the whole thing, I just... Well, I didn't say that. Well, I feel silly. Oh, an extra point for including a shot of her undies flying off. Because, Lord knows, after the old broadline, we just had to level out with something more family friendly. Oh, I need a break from weird sexualized grannies. I'm gonna go look up some proper Christmas porn. Ooh, jingle balls all the way. And Schwarzenegger's in it. signs the papers after hearing his dumbass song, which comes to the dismay of Jake. I'm going over to see Austin Bucks and sell this dump for millions. Millions? This place was worth millions the whole time? Grandpa, how could you do that? What do you mean, how could he do that? Fucking millions, you little idiot! I've gotta stop her. Why? Think of all the people you can help! Think of all the hungry you can feed! Think of all the charity 
kids you could give to? Are you saying you'd rather read stories to one, two, three, three kids and serve one, two, three, four, five, six customers as opposed to help thousands and thousands of people not go to bed hungry tonight? I think grandma's actually fucking insane! But, nevertheless, we gotta keep her tradition alive and well as Jake tries to talk to Mel's lawyer. Please don't buy Grandma's store! Too late, kid. Cousin Mel's attorney. I am Slime. You said it, not me. Yes? Sorry, Jake. <sighs> Did they really think people would be laughing so hard at that line they actually needed a pause for it? Did they work hours on that line? Did they think people would just be in an uproar over the amount of laughter that they were producing? You said it, not me. Oh, sorry, the applause sign was broken. <laughs> So, of all people, C.E. Leo thinks up the most obvious thing that the kid can do. If you really believe Grandma was run over by Sanders' reindeer, then find him. He should know where Grandma is. Okay, I will. Yeah, just a mere nine months later, he's finally doing what he should have been doing from day fucking one. To Santa Claus at SantaClausIsReal.com He writes an email to Santa, which, now that I think about it, how old can the grown-up version of this kid telling the story be if there's goddamn email in it? And Santa eventually gets it. Sure enough, it turns out Santa had Grandma the whole time. And when I say had, I don't mean in that way. I think. I mean, she claims she has amnesia, but were there no other hospitals to take her to? No police stations? His only recourse was to whisk her off all the way to the fucking North Pole? Hell, he knows who everyone in the world is, so couldn't he, through deduction, figure out where she lives? It's not like she was that far away from the house. I mean, by God, nine fucking months of signs and milk cartons and Santa never came across any of that? Even the signs I could kind of understand, but the milk cartons? The fucking milk cartons? Milk and cookies? Hello? Kind of his thing? I think he would notice a goddamn carton or two! Grandma Spankenheimer? Nope, never met her. But you might ask one of those short fellers. Classic case of amnesia, can't remember a thing. Wait, is it me or does Santa sound Jewish? If I could meet just one stinking person who understands the holidays... This raises so many puzzling questions. This is like the Christmas Da Vinci Code. So one of the elves goes to tell Jake that his grandma is okay. You're an elf. The genuine article. Ah! <laughs> well, that was a confusing parody. Should we throw in some random Wizard of Oz references while we're at it? Would you like to find your grandma? Then follow me. So all the Who's and Who the Fuck greenlit this bill gather around to see the reunion of Jake and his grandma. But grandma still has amnesia. It's me, Jake! Don't you remember? Eh, uh, nope, nothing. Show her her Tweety Bird! That'll jog her memory! So even though she still doesn't remember, she agrees to go with Jake and Santa to stop the store from being sold. But Cousin Mel sees grandma and decides to kidnap her. I. Guess she's just kind of used to it after being held hostage for nine months. Grandma! We couldn't find her anywhere. This, of course, leads to one logical conclusion. Since Grandma is nowhere to be found, and the man in the red suit here admitted he ran over her, I demand that you have Santa arrested for the disappearance of Grandma. Wait, what? Uh, I don't think that would be the headline. The real headline would be, holy shit, Santa Claus is real! Scientists study flying reindeer for advanced warfare. Meanwhile, our two villains hold on to a surprisingly accepting of her kidnapping grandma. Okay, just because she has amnesia doesn't mean she'll do anything. An older person wouldn't just stay locked up in a cabin with no questions asked. Unless you're in this cabin next door, but I just don't ask questions with that guy. Santa Claus must be worth a fortune. Your share as Grandpa's financial advisor is... Woof. Woof! Grandpa's gonna sue the pants off of Santa. Well, looks like the animators took another toke break and accidentally sent the wrong footage to the studio again. Are there any song sequences that don't look like bad flash animation e-cards? Could you just see someone sending this to a co-worker? Grandpa's gonna 
on a suit, the pants off a Santa. He knows the law is on his side. I'm at the courthouse where the sensational Santa Claus trial is reaching its climax. District Attorney Hartung is making his impassioned summation. Okay, Hartung, really? Fucking Hartung? For fuck's sake, are there any names in this world that aren't fitting character traits given by two-year-olds? Your Honor, Black Judge, Boy McCrazy Pupil. The evidence proves Santa Claus is responsible for Grandma's disappearance. So, if the beard fits, you must convict. Well, that doesn't date this at all. Care to throw in a Borat joke while you're at it? But Jake finds his grandma, jogs her memory, and brings her to the jury of Dilbert caricatures to explain their case. If you and the jury would taste this fruitcake, this one was made by grandma using her special ingredients. Taste it, and then compare it to the pieces of cake found at the scene of the alleged crime. I think you will find a difference between the two. Now, I may be an old-fashioned lawyer child, but I do say, if the cake tastes like shit, you must acquit. Oh, we referenced that already? Oh, okay, how about this one? Um, smoking. And I gotta say, for a special obviously made for seven-year-olds, there is a lot of court talk in the last five minutes of this film. I object! This is a note Santa left at the accident scene. Slay Hickler negligence. State's evidence number 12. To the charge of leaving the scene of an accident. Dust it for fingerprints. Do they honestly think they have to represent the justice system as properly as possible? Are people really going to question the legal ramifications of Grandma got fucking run over by a reindeer? All right, I admit it. I hid the note. And? And? I made Grandpa sign over his rights to the store. And? I'm behind this evil trial. And? And I hate the goody-goody feelings of Christmas. Wow, saying the word and really seems to be the ultimate truth serum. And? And I got a sex change when I was 20. And? And I'm responsible for killing JFK. And? And I like shizer with puppies while shoving candy corn up my anus and licking a lollipop made out of the flavored tears of orphan children. And? Stop! Arrest this woman for obstructing justice and almost ruining Christmas. That's what you get for being selfish and stupid. There's more to life than a little money, you know. Don't you know that? And just to bookend the story, I guess, they decide to run over the old broad once again. So that was Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. It's about as good as the song. It's totally pointless and half-assed, which is strange seeing how the director has done some other good holiday stuff in the past. But I will say there is something kind of comical to just how forced it all is. You just can't believe how lazy the segues are, what cutouts the characters were made, and how utterly unnecessary everything in this special is. I suppose in that sense, it is kind of worth seeing just to witness how uninspired a commercial knockoff of an already pretty annoying song can be. But if you're looking for something to truly win you over this holiday, might I recommend Kahlua and Eggnog. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm so sorry I couldn't have my traditional over-the-top reaction to Christmas this year, but like every element of our media says, it should be calm, relaxing, soothing, just a little bit silly. Just like Grandma got run over by a reindeer. So from all of us to you, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. No! Critic, this isn't right. You shouldn't repress yourself during the holidays. You don't know what you're doing. You should be able to express yourself however you want. Tamara, stop! Critic, you're free! Free! Tamara, what have you done? Oh, Malcolm. No one should have to hold back their feelings on Christmas. Christmas is about love, beauty, and the acceptance of your- <laughs> I'm full of Christmas semen. I don't know what it is, but it's hot. It's like heaven's orgasm inside an oatmeal cookie shot. And when I put my Santa hat on, it's a needle full of Christmas glee. Go 
zoning my house in frilly shit in Disney trademark intellectual property. <laughs> Cause it's snowing, I'm not shopping, and I pop up pop up fucking love Christmas. <laughs> Setting up the lights of my fucking house sings. Cause I'm fucking batshit crazy about Christmas. If Christmas was living, I'd fuck it to death and then consume its body for its Christmas breath. Cause it's growing, I'm not stopping, and I pop up pop up fucking love Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ on the electric guitar! You won! You won, goddammit! You died for your sin! I'll buy all things red and green, accumulating thousands in debt. You cannot be us! It ruined my life, making it the best Christmas yet! And I'll play those Christmas carols until my ears will bleed with Christmas cheer. It'll scare the shit out of you, but it's only getting bigger every year! <laughs> Cause it's snowing, I love shopping And I pop up, pop up, pop up, love Christmas I love those stop motion shows that scare the shit out of me Cause I'm fucking batshit crazy about Christmas I made it hot chocolate till my skin is red And I quote Christmas story till your soul is dead Cause I'm soaking in sweet toppings And I fuck, 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 love Christmas And the deals, and the meals, and the meals, and the steals, and the seas Keep it longer, make it stronger, nothing's wrong here I can stay here all year At the Macy's downtown I'm getting high, feeling wired I'm inspired, I'm on fire right now I love the overmarketing for making confused By the way, the song's available on iTunes I want to smash it open to its different gold And then search its brains for its Christmas gold And then drink its blood till I lose control And the Christmas madness will take its Don't ever fucking do that again! I'm sorry! What he has is a sickness that can only be cured by repression and tranquilizers. Yeah, that was fucking scary! It's snowing, I love shopping, and I fa 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 fucking love Christmas. Enough to build tranquilizer immunity, I must be fucking batshit crazy. Wait a minute, what did he say? I'll kill anyone that's celebrating with me Your resistance is feeding my insanity Cause it's snowing, I love shopping So put the star on top of the tree and buy me a fucking TV We're going on a shopping spree, my stocking filled with DVDs My heart is filling up with bleak and help is coming over me I fuck, 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 fucking love Christmas <sighs> Boy, that did feel good Thanks so much, you guys Hey, Jesus Cause it's snowing, I love shopping And I pop up, pop up, pop up, king of Christmas I love those stop motion shows, will scare the shit out of me Cause I'm fucking batshit crazy about Christmas I paint in hot chocolate till my skin is red And I quote Christmas story till your soul is dead Cause I'm soaking in sweet toppings And I fuck, 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 king of Christmas Better get looking for the old Brad. Hey guys, Doug Walker here. Did you like that song at the end? Of course you did, because it's Christmas and Christmas is awesome. And that song was written by Rods Gallon and it is available for download, like we say in the song. So if you want to download that, here's the link to that. You can go check it out, all that good stuff. Uh, second, December 7th, that's his upcoming weekend. Uh, my brother and I are going to be appearing at the Barnes & Noble in Oak Brook Mall. Uh, you probably recognize it. That's the one where uh, Dante Bosco beats the shit out of me in the Top 11 Avatar episodes. Uh, and we've done a lot of fun stuff there before. And this year we are doing a, a tribute to Christmas specials. And this is very much an interactive thing where we all just kind of get together and talk about Christmas specials. And one of the best things about Christmas. So we all just come together and sort of interact 
interactive and we talk about it, you talk about it, share your favorite ones, worst ones, all sorts of stuff like that. And afterwards, we're going to be doing a signing, we'll have prints and merchandise, all sorts of good stuff. And if you have a question to ask or something, we'll be there for that too. So uh, drop them by and talk Christmas with us. And finally, last thing, uh, we are going to be doing a charity auction soon uh, with a bunch of uh, props and stuff that we've had uh, over the years. Uh, we haven't done one in a while, and uh, this is going to be for uh, a charity we've done before. Here's the link to that. Uh, it's for children who have cancer, and this is a very special camp that's set up for them, and it's a wonderful cause and we visited there and it's just a phenomenal place so we will keep you uh, we will keep you updated on uh, what the props are and uh, costumes and stuff we have like the Dante Bosco uh, outfit signed his Zuko outfit uh, we have like one of the uh, nostalgia critic suits the one that like I rolled around in in food fight and stuff like that uh, nostalgia critic hat so uh, yeah all sorts of stuff is gonna go up for auction and uh, I'm just bringing it up now, even though I haven't officially put on eBay yet, but I'm just putting it up now because, guys, you know, it's that time of the year where you really want to give to those less fortunate, and uh, we can just tell you this is a good cause. So, um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Hope Christmas is shaping up great for you, and we'll see you in December with more great stuff on the way. So, see you there.